So great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on on the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By, and we are featured on a number of stations, especially our friends in the Seattle area, AM, FM, Mr. Benny, uh, KKN, WAM, AM, FM, AM, 1150. (laughs) Yeah, I thought the station was Mr. Benny. That'd be kind of cool. The way you started it. The way you started it out. Oh, I guess you don't like that. (laughs) Well, you know, how did I forget that? So here's the question, Benny. 20 years and I didn't get that right. No, like I'm, no, I'm like looking right. at your logo. No, no, you've got it right. I was just gonna be like, oh, we can change everything, like KBNY, you know. So it's the it's Benny Station, like rather than taking. Oh money. my gosh, it's That'd so funny, like isn't venture. it? Yeah, it'd be a great venture for me. <laughs> ja- ja- it would be. Jacob's in. I know he's 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 down. Jacob's oh. like, okay, we're really going to change our name. <laughs> Jacob's like, we're going to go. We've been TTR since 2009. Now we're TTN because it's the network. Uh And so even with that, it's kind of like mentally, mindfully, spiritually, you lean into it. And, you know, it's so interesting about this because part of today is, you know, I've got Benny, you know, Aura, Aura Nadrich is joining me here today. Mindfulness and mysticism. You know what? It's almost impossible for me to imagine mindfulness without mysticism. It's just like, it's just a little bit like, I don't, I don't, I mean, 20 years ago when I started to do this, I didn't even understand what those two words even meant. But this is a fabulous message in a fantastic book. And Aura was saying that, you know, it's been a while since she's been on, but what is it that people do in between being on my show? Well, they do a lot. They do a lot, but she's always done a lot. She's the president of the Institute for Transformational Thinking. She's the author of many things, but you know, live true mindfulness guide to authenticity. So you see what the theme is, you know, named in the 100 best mindfulness books of all time. And now you think she's going to stop there? Certified life coach, mindfulness teacher, specializes in transformational thinking. That's why I'm so excited to talk with her today, because I'm going to learn some things. Self-discovery. And I think about this and I think to myself, here we are. And we haven't connected in a while since our last book. Here we are again, and there are two things that I think about, and this is something Linda, myself, and Jessica thought about. We're figuring out a way on a regular basis to bring panels of people back in between their books, like in between their speaking, in between their dog catching, whatever they do, there is a message that we are going to create, especially in our TV launch, because we want to bring panels together because people are hungry and they're hungry for what she does. This book and the journey of this and the forward in the book by the 14th Dalai Lama. And and when I think about connecting present moment awareness with higher states of consciousness, isn't this the magic and how we get to from wherever we are, wherever y'all are right now, right? And you guys have heard my story, or we're going to talk about Aura's story in a minute. Wherever you are, whatever's in your bank account really isn't you. Whatever you think you are, you're much more than that. And she says it in this beautiful book. And at some point, we are going to get to the chapter on supernatural powers. But right now, I am so thrilled and honored to have Aura join us here today. It's a stunning book. It's beyond stunning. It is a book to help us get off the couch or if you're on the couch, have incredible moments there. Or it's great to have you. Welcome. Oh, Dr. Pat, it's so great to be with you again. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, Benny and I have been together for 20 years. That was Benny's like 20 years, like, and I'm not even getting the network right, right? But, you know, there are moments where it's hard to explain how our hearts get filled. And I was reading your book. I go through the book. um, I go through the book once and then I go back. And when I went back, I noticed there are just really cool things that you've done in the book. Um, You know, like even before a chapter like Awaken Now, I am awake, but I must awaken more to know that I've been asleep far too long. Hello. Doesn't that sum up where we've been for three years now? Tell me about this. Thank you for pointing that out, Dr. Pat. Yeah, I mean, it's been quite a ride. 
you know, we really have been on quite the ride for the last couple of years. And I think it's really important to talk about it. Do you know, I mean, I do say that I like to go to places where a lot of people aren't comfortable. And what I want to say about that is we have to learn how to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? It's really important to look at things that have caused us tremendous pain and suffering and confusion and all those things because the only way we can navigate the choppy waters of life is to really be able to move through them in the best way possible in an intelligent way in a mindful way in a present way do you know what i mean that's why i love talking about mindfulness because it brings you into present moment awareness to know exactly what's going on in the moment that you're in right now yeah this is really for me when i think about this is in and i would love for you to comment on my comment earlier because i think it's at the core of the book in a lot of in a lot of ways and and i i don't know i love the cover and i love the back of the book so i just got to say that i'm going to hold it up in a minute unless jacob i think jacob may have it but this mm -hmm. i just got to show everybody Great. but then i got to I mean, we're talking light language, sacred geometry. Of course we are. Thank you, Pat. And I want to a shout out to Dimitri, who works with me, who's just a total artist. So, yeah. I, 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 I have to, you and I need to talk with Dimitri. I've got a few ideas. <laughs> but I made a comment. And I think I've known this in my life, but I, I think I didn't understand it. And, and it is the core essence of the book. That I want to ask you about before we dig a little bit deeper. I know today when I wake up, I have a practice. It's a little short one, but I have it. And it brings into being at my level from the, what I know how to do, mindfulness and mysticism. It is so refreshing to see that you have brought both into harmony in this book. But I made a comment, and I don't know if my comment's true. I don't know how to separate them now to create transformation in my own personal life and even in the network. Can you talk to that for a minute? That is just so perceptive of you to say that, because what I say to people as a mindfulness practitioner for as long as I've been doing it, the amazing thing about being on the mindfulness trajectory, you know, when people say, well, what, what is mindfulness? Mindful, mindfulness is the practice of being in the present moment with total awareness. Okay, well, we know how many moments there are in a day, how many moments there are in a week, how many moments there are in a month, how many moments are in a year, and how many moments we're going to experience in our lifetime it seems infinite. So if you look at that and say, what is the present moment about right now? Well, when you start to become a more mindfully aware human being, I say it's like a camera, like the lens of a camera. It starts to widen and widen and widen more to the point where you see so much more. And it is amazing and mind-blowing. It's it's it comes down to, Dr. Pat, how much do you want to see? How much do you want to be aware of? How, how sharp do you want your lens of vision to be? That's personal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, that's up to you. That's up to me. You know, somebody can look at a sunset and go, oh, uh -huh, that's nice. And someone can look at a sunset or a sunrise and have their minds blown. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I do know what you mean. You know how I know what you mean? Okay, ready? So it's interesting. Um, I love... I love certain movies. I grew up as a sci-fi. I mean, honestly, even as a really young kid, that's where I spent every Saturday just in the weirdest movies. But I'm a little fascinated with the latest Matrix movie, and it got really bad reviews um, in, a, in the context of the original. Of course it would. However, I was fascinated by it for a lot of reasons. But there's a scene at the end where Trinity gets up from this horrible scene at the end with the guns and the whole thing. There's this moment where she looks out and you could see the expression on her face. It is, it is for me, a, it's like she's having a spiritual experience right there. And she's looking out and, she's, and all she says is, it's beautiful. See, we have to get back to, yes, it's a movie, but that moment, that is a humanity moment, isn't it? Oh, Dr. Pat, you are just, you know, singing to my soul. First of all, 
I happen to love Carrie Ann Moss. Who's a oh, I love her. Love her. And she is a very, very conscious woman. Number one, let's just start with that. So whatever she put into that scene and all the scenes in the movie is going to raise the vibration of that movie anyway. Okay. So that scene that you're talking about is really what I talk about, even in the chapter of mindfulness and mysticism and perception. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I do all comes down to perception. It all comes down to, again, the way in which you see something, do you know? And if you use the filter, which I describe that in a quote in the book, I think it's Descartes. I don't know. I have so many quotes in the book about yes, you the, do. the filter becomes the soul of which we are looking through to see things. Imagine what you can see and what a high vibrational level you're seeing something at. Do you know? We don't have to see things just as they're presented to us because if we saw things just as they're presented to us day in and day out it would pr be pretty bleak okay and it's incumbent upon us to say oh, no 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 i'm not going to let things outside of myself things that we know like media social media the news all that dictate how i should see the universe you know, and let's talk about that because there are a couple of things in the book, and I want to share this with everybody for those of you just tuning in. The book is Mindfulness and Mysticism, or I want to take a minute. Um, Benny, I'd like to skip the break if we could, Jacob. I want to take a minute because I want people to find out about you. I want them to, to go ahead and get the book because I did a brief introduction of just trying to explain <laughs> you do and you know there are sometimes there are no words but it's because of your messaging it's because that i love being a student i love just i just love being able to understand things that i never thought i could understand and yet watch my life change see i want that for people that's why we have this network. That's why you do what you do. But I would love for people to get to know you, to go to your website and, and let's tell them how to do this. Let's tell them about the book, but let's also talk about the fact that there are mindfulness sessions that people can plug into. We need to help people, Aura. Yes, we do. We really do. And what I'm seeing, first of all, auranatridge.com, that's my website. There's a lot going on on that website. Check it Beautiful. out. Thank you. Check it out. Um, Yes, people do, and people are. And listen, when I wrote a book called Mindfulness and Mysticism, I've been teaching mindfulness for a very long time, starting with the entry level of just what it means to be present, okay, just to show up in a moment of your life fully present. When I decided to write this book, Mindfulness and Mysticism, which I felt really called to do, using a word in a title like mysticism, I thought to myself, okay, some people are going to think it's too esoteric. It's a, I wrote a book on metaphysics. You know, maybe they won't really resonate to it. I've had more people resonate to this book than I could have ever imagined because people are ready to get more information. And it's not information that isn't something that they should know about. It isn't just kept for those that only seek sacred knowledge that's esoteric or metaphysical i want to debunk that that's why i wanted to say i want to take the mystic mystery out of mysticism do you know and make and bring it into a 21st century context so that we can live our lives more mystically more magically just more amazingly if you will you can call it whatever you want do you know like why do we have to live our lives day in and day out day out thinking it's got to be some mundane doldrum kind of way that we have to just be at the effect of all this negativity that's being thrown at us 24 7. i i defy that i'm like no you create your own universe you create your own reality do you know it's like it's not dictated for you yes there are things that are going on in the universe that are very disturbing to us right now but it isn't coming upon us which is why I think the book is so timely, to define how we want to see not only our reality play out, but the collective. We're mm. all part of this awakening that's happening right now. Yeah. You know, you could actually, okay, like here's me now telling you what you could do. You ready for this? Fasten your seatbelt. You know, as I went through the book, I thought, you know how you have in the book, let's talk about the book. In the book, on some of the pages, you have these beautiful messages in red. Thank you for using a color. Mm -hmm. You can literally pull every one of those out and that would be a separate book. I don't know how many there are, but they're amazing. 
Um, when I went through the book, what I was really so struck by is how you take us on a walk, a journey. It's a walk. It's like my. It's like when when I studied with Lakota tradition and Monica. She says, "May you walk in beauty." See, and this is what I get from this. May you walk in beauty. And yet you're taking us through and you're giving us some tools. I want to talk about divine thought illumination. Now, I've heard a lot of words and I've heard a lot of phrases in 20 years. And this I love. I gave it an acronym. I like did DTI, but don't pay any attention to that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. But I just loved it. It's like I got to remember it right? I have a little learning different thing. So I have to do DTI, divine thought illumination. And then I went to a place and you have to help us here because I think I'm like our listeners. I went to the place. Am I going to get there? I had this moment of sadness. And of course, it's in the front of the book. And as I read the rest of the book, I got the answer. But how many people Do we want to speak with right now? Look at them in the camera, look at them in the eye and say, this is you. You are this. What would you say, Aura? Well, you really, you know, said it quite beautifully. You know, this is you and this is who you are. We are divine beings. We come into this incarnation as divine beings perfect spirits that are inhabiting this body. You know, I love the quote by philosopher, mystic Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, our spiritual beings having a human experience, lest we forget. We are these divine spirits that are inhabiting this body. What do we want this life to be? Just to be at the effect of a more base kind of dense energy that keeps us stuck in this human experience. And we don't really lift the moments higher and go, wait a minute, there's a lot of magic to this creation. Let me tap into it, which everybody can. And I really also want to say, Dr. Pat, it's not like I'm saying, oh, let's just be like, you know, high out of our minds 24 seven in some altered universe that is just, you know, mind blowing. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that we can tap into divine consciousness, whatever that means to you. That's personal, whether it's in a religious context or a spiritual context, whether it's God, divine, Mm -hmm. unity, consciousness, source, the absolute Christ consciousness, you can call it whatever you want, call it your cat. I don't care what you want to call it. We can tap into this divine knowing of what we're doing here on this planet Earth and live our lives with just a greater sense of intelligence and knowledge and wisdom. And it's going to change your whole trajectory if you want it. It's available to you. That's really all I'm saying in my book, Pat. I'm offering, I'm I'm welcoming, I'm I'm inviting you in, as you said, to take this journey. You know what I love about this, Aura? It's like, yes, all of that's true, but it's how you do it. You know, I, I had a mentor a long time ago that said, Pat, you're going to learn in life. One, you can't take a person to a place you haven't gone. But two, it's not so much about like the end game. It's like how you get there. And I studied that in my research for 10 years. And the reason I know that it's this is, may I read again from your book? Please. Okay. I step upon the path of the divine. I ask that my soul guide me so that I may live a divine life. I am present and ready to listen. If we could start our day, everyone listening every day and have a moment. Mine is, I ask God, the divine. Thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for today. Please tell me what is mine to do today. Because I need guidance. And there'll be days where I have to ask that. But the reason I'm bringing it up is it sets the stage for being and becoming for everything you said in the book, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes, it does. And, you know, asking of that guidance, which is so beautiful, even when we're really having a hard time. Do you know what I mean? When we're having a hard time, it's very hard not to have much faith. It's very hard to really not believe that we are actually even 
in the presence of divine guidance, you know? And really what that means is that we're in alignment to receive, we're in alignment to, as you said, to listen, to hear. If we ask the questions, what is my understanding today? What am I meant to know today? Yeah. How can I be of in service today? How can I get through the day? How can I just get through the day better? Do you know, it, it, whatever that question is for you, when you ask those questions and trust that you will be guided, you will be guided. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, here we go, right? Um, didn't know this, but as I was reading, the next thing you talk about, and, and if people could do a little bit of what you and I are saying just to kick off their day or end their day, it is a moment of self-surrender, isn't it? It is a moment of humility to be yeah. able to step back and be open and receive. And, and you know, I say once a day, but to be honest with you, every time I'm in the middle of something or I start something, there, it is in the back of my mind to ask. Let's talk about the self-surrender because... If we cannot do that, even from an esoteric, even from an intuitive perspective, one, we're not going to hear the guidance. Two, we're not going to be able to take the action. And that's Mm -hmm. later on. But part of this is, as you discuss in the book, the importance of lifting the veil before we can get to the spiritual shift. Let's hear from you, because you talk about lifting the veil really interestingly. And there are a lot of people that will be like, I don't really, what veil? Do I have a veil? Can you address that for a minute? Yeah, I want to circle back to what you said about you can't think of mindfulness without really thinking of mysticism, which is really where I was going with this book. It was like, I wanted to say, you will see differently. Keep staying present. Keep showing up for the moments of your life because the more present you get, the more aware you become, the more aware you become, the more conscious you become, the more conscious you become, the more you see, the more you see, it starts to go into an upward mobile trajectory that is extraordinary. Okay. So having said that, something like lifting the veils, I use that as a metaphor in that there's so much more for us to see. And there's a lot that's being shrouded from us seeing it. Do you know, I love to use the analogy of the Wizard of Oz, you know, and the wizard who was a little old man that was behind a curtain. It took Toto the dog to pull the curtain open to show Dorothy and her three friends that were in in desperate need of a brain, a heart, and what, uh, wisdom, I believe that they were being scared by this very ominous, very frightening voice of a little old man behind a curtain. (laughs) And unless Toto hadn't pulled that curtain open, they would have thought that it was some entity that was greater than them, that was some, you know, masterful entity that was to be feared and that they would have to follow, you know? And that's a very powerful image the whole idea of what the wizard of oz was showing us you know we all love the movie and we were cheering for dorothy you know to get back to kansas and wake up from this dream but i use that as a metaphor because that's a perfect example of the veils that i'm talking about you know push back the veil lift the veil look at something that's being presented to you and and ask yourself some questions does this really seem truthful to me is this real for me? What is my intuition telling me right now? My intuition is telling me that what I'm seeing or what I'm being told to see or what I'm hearing is not resonating to my inner barometer that it is true. Do you know? That's lifting the veils. And the more you question, the more you probe, the more you don't just accept what is readily told to you is gospel it's incumbent upon all of us to find out what is the truth around us, just like, you know, happened in The Wizard of Oz. So I, I love that metaphor. I think it really speaks volumes about how before you're so quick to believe something is what it's telling you it is, yep. it might just not be true. I love this. You know, part of what I'm really excited about is, you know, this idea of, transcending I think you call it transcending the ordinary and I want to talk about that when we come back from break but before we do that um, 
you know, how, again, how do people get a copy of the book? How do they find out more about you? Let's make sure they know that and we'll take a short break. Again, orinadrish.com. You can order my book uh, on Amazon. That's the quickest way to get it. And I just recorded an audio version of it. So I'm super excited about getting that out there for those that don't like to hold a book in their hand, but prefer listening. It's going to be available in all ways. And when we come back, what we're going to talk about is how do you acknowledge where you are today? How do you keep your eye on the vision for where you want to go? And then how can you be kind to yourself in getting there by literally looking at what Aura has laid out? Everything from addiction and mysticism, very important thing. The Dark Night of the Soul, I thank you, Dark Night of the Soul. I thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. But when you have these moments, how do you know you're having them? How do you know you're in a spiritual place of transcendence? And I want to say this to all of you listening and you're thinking, that's not me. I go to my job. I wake up. I got to take the, the subway. I got to go to New York. I got to look at, we're all there. But this is for everyone. And it is the key to help us repair, remodel, and reboot from the past three years. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with Aura. Do not arouse the wrath of the great and powerful Oz. I said come back tomorrow. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. The great and Oz has spoken. Okay. Do you get stuck in that someday attitude, living the same day over and over again with no action? The Becoming You Show, big ideas that inspire, impact, and influence your life with Leah Rowling is for you. Tune in every Friday at 11 a.m. Central on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will have you feeling inspired to take action with purpose and intention. For more information and to get in touch with me, visit www.LeahRowling.com. Tune in to Awaken Your Magic Within, reveal unconscious systems to discover your unstoppable freedom power. Join me, Tracy Lynn Wallace, on TransformationTalkRadio.com the first Tuesday of each month, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, to gain insight, direction, and tools to uncover limiting beliefs. Get ready to step into your unstoppable power to discover and uncover your magic within. Have you been on life's roller coaster trying to figure out what to do next? Then join Greta, Lee, Yvonne in the Realm of Beings each Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Take the dust off your wings and fly to the highest heights in your thoughts and actions. Express your greatness. Be a champion for yourself. And we'll see you there on Shifting Impressions Conversations with the Realm of Beings. It takes courage to step into your calling and go for your dreams. Sabotage monsters can get in your way, preventing you from reaching your potential. You can choose to struggle alone, or you can choose community and support, someone to walk beside you, meeting you where you are. If you are ready to make real and lasting change, Coach Christine Clark is here for you. Find out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching and group programs with Coach Christine at sunglowtransformation.com. There is divinity within you. Join Lisa Belts on her show, The Unshakable Living Show, Supernaturally and Divinely Unshakable, twice a month, and find that divinity that you deserve. Lisa will help you feel encouraged, empowered, and realize that you're not alone on your journey. With Lisa, address the foundation, the frame, and the finish of your dreams and become truly unshakable. Hi, I'm Coach Martez. And I'm licensed therapist with Drina Layton. We want to invite you to join us on the Coach Martez and with Drina Layton Show, where we discuss understanding love, accepting truth, and changing your perspectives. Relationships are the currency to life, and so many couples find themselves broke in their relationships. We want you to join us for a lively discussion and practical tips and insights on how to turn things around and gain the merit for life mindset.
Hate to interrupt, but you guys ready to come back? All right. Okay, let me, let me digress, Benny. Benny? Yes? No? Guess who's going... I guess who I heard is going on tour again. Uh, Well, I'm Christine Aguilera. Yeah, she's on tour. Uh, oh, well, her, see, that's Stevie how much Nicks. I know. <laughs> oh, but really? The big guy, Yellow Brick Road guy, Elton John. Well, he's been on tour, too. <laughs> he doesn't stop, but this is now... I think he's calling it... Or you're going to relate to this, right? This is so related to what we're talking about. <laughs> The final farewell, final, final. He's tour. been doing the final, <laughs> final farewell, final, <laughs> final, the final farewell tours. It doesn't end. You're right. Oh my god. So we'll leave it at that. Oh my gosh. Why does he just call it the never ending tour? That's true. Uh, the never ending yellow brick road. Hello. Go. Oh my god. Okay, so we could have a whole conversation about what's your favorite song on that. What's your fi- so dirty little girl maybe or funeral for a friend? Okay, let's not. But all of this, so, or one of the things that, that I love is when, when I'm reflecting on, on, on the book, and there's so much in it, and I know we're not going to get to all of it today, but I am so really honored by the way that you take us and remind us gently of the human spirit. And then I started to read about the book, right? I mean, so, so, so I'm going to read again, Benny. It says, my spirit breathes life into me each day, each and every day. I acknowledge it, I listen to it, and I allow for it to guide me in all that I do. When I do that, everything lines up. When I don't do that, crazy town happens. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. I say, Pat, Dr. Pat, love calling you doctor because you are, um, and you're the doctor of definitely transformation going on today that's for sure thank you um is to take a spiritual pulse to take a spiritual pulse you know to start your day taking a spiritual pulse how do we check in with ourselves when i say a spiritual pulse you know some listeners might go what, what is she talking about like what's a spiritual pulse it's like check in with your spirit and ask your spirit how you doing <laughs> you know you have a right to ask yourself some questions how am I doing? How's my spirit doing? How's the, the spirit that breathes life into my being doing? Do you know, I say in the book, Dr. Pat, what do we remember when somebody's no longer with us? When they've passed on, we remember their spirit. We remember their essence. We remember what breathed life into their body. That's what's happening. You know, yeah. that's what we're really feeling about someone is their energy, their spirit. Do you know? So when we listen to our spirit and we take a spiritual pulse and ask ourselves, how am I doing? That's what we want to do. We want to check in with ourselves and find that out. It's very important. I have to tell you this. I love and was surprised and still surprised and still love that I'm reading the book. And I get to a point in the book and I say, now she's talking about me and my family. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why, what? Wait a minute. Intelligent beings. I got that. Awaken. I'm right there. Chapter 17, addiction and mysticism. Oh, my God. And I got here. Thank you for putting Carl Jung's quote in there. But I got to ask you, I mean, is it, is it because, I didn't even know the question to ask you. All I know is I come from a family. My mom committed suicide. She was an addict, prescribed drugs, because people that are feisty back then when she was a woman, you just got to drug them. Then you start to drink. Mm -hmm. Um, And my family, myself, my sister, we all went through it. Um, myself, I ended up homeless at 17. I buried two stepsisters about five or six years ago. Um, my sister died on a hospital floor. My mom's heart exploded from overwork. And so I opened the book and I said, thank you, Aura. Thank you. But I got to ask you, this is purposely put in the book and you put the smack dab right in the middle. What were you sensing? What were you feeling? And was it because we're coming off probably three of the most 
addictive style type behavioral years we've seen in a long time. What is it? Tell me. Tell me what came to your heart here. Well, keep in mind, Dr. Pat, that I wrote this book before. You did. That's right. Before, you know, which I felt was very sort of prophetic and omniscient. Like, what was I, what was I downloading? <laughs> you know, what was coming to me? I was like, you know, I think I'm going to take this, this uh, journey myself into going deeper, taking a deeper dive into, into what it means to be in present moment awareness, do you know? And I went all in. You know, I went all in with it. And addiction is huge. And that chapter, I remember what I was feeling when I went into that chapter. I went deep, deep down into what that means because, you know, pain and suffering is part of the human condition. It afflicts everybody to certain degrees. And I wanted to really address things like the dark night of the soul which when you said, thank you, Dark Knight of the Soul, I'm right there with you. Some of my greatest lessons I've ever learned was during having a Dark Knight of the Soul. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, but it's the only way we really can grow is to take a deep dive into that dark, deep, dark blue sea that isn't always so blue and go down deep in there and find out what's there. You know, it's like, stop pushing it away. Stop Mm -hmm. pushing from it. So in the area of addiction, and I've, you know, known and loved and lost people to addiction. So I know it. Um, you know, it's interesting to me because that chapter, boy, when I went into, <clears throat> excuse me, especially even the, the Bill Wilson's, you know, what, what really woke him up to never be the same again, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, do you know, which was a mystical experience for him. I was really looking at it so closely. I put it right under the lens and I was like, wow, you know, what is it that we're looking for when our soul, our heart and soul is aching so deeply that all we want to do is just check out, that all we want to do is just, you know, peace out and get the hell out of here. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, whoa, 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 people, you know, come on, let's be together on this one because life can be a you, you, you can put all of your adjectives you want to put in it. You know what I'm saying? If I do. Real, you know what? Okay. And it's going to just, you know, s- grab you, swallow you up and spit you out every chance it can get. And you got to know what you're made of. You need to know what you are made of and the universe is here to help you. Yep. But I am so glad for two things. Whether you wrote this before or after um, COVID, right now, it's one of, I think, humanity's greatest challenges across the board. Now, I'm talking about, and the quote you have in here is beautiful. Every form of it by Carl Jung, every form of addiction is bad, no matter whether the narcotic be alcohol, more morphine, or idealism. Let me read it again. Every form of addiction is bad, no matter whether the narcotic be alcohol or morphine or idealism. And what he's saying is, if you're addicted to food, if you're addicted to the internet, if you're addicted to your cell phone, if you're addicted to a person. But one of the things I loved about this is the way you talked about it and and put it in the book. And thank you for your reference to Bill Wilson, because one of the things that I always ask myself, why did it take Wilson almost 30 years to write a letter to call Jung to literally thank him for establishing, if not for call Jung, there would be no 12 step program on the planet that had anything to do with spirituality. And I love it. I'm sorry it took Bill so long for him to acknowledge Jung in the role he played. But the good news is when you read the letters the letter from Wilson is great, but the letter from Carl Jung is so revealing, and it was so sad. And when I read it, I realized this was a man that in this letter, he is very clear that he says, I wish I could have done more. I was afraid to do more. Now, if Carl Jung, the way we know him, the way you've got him in the book, And the doors that he opens, even now when we move to the rest of your book, all those doors he opened, 
And we think, how amazing. And he, he's admitting, I was holding back. I was afraid to do more. I couldn't talk more. I was shocked to know that he's like most of us. Shocked and relieved. Because I think sometimes we hold back. And I'd like for you to talk to that because the rest of your book, in my opinion, is about not holding back. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's Am, did, did I get that okay? Yeah, you certainly did. No, it is about not holding back. You know, it is really about going in towards our fear. You know, it's like, what are we really holding ourselves back from? You know, I'm a very much about the inquiry. I'm very much about asking questions. My first book was Says Who? How One Simple Question Can Change Everything Forever. That got, that jump started this whole thing for me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think it's really important to ask ourselves some serious questions along the life journey. Do you know what I mean? And so to even ask yourself daily, what's holding me back today? Let's start in present moment, real time, you know, like wake up. If you're feeling like you, you're feeling reticent, you're feeling fear, you're feeling something, you know, it's like, you don't really know what it is, but you're feeling it. Ask yourself some questions. What am I feeling? What am I afraid of? What am I holding myself back from? What am I afraid to discover about myself? Why is going to the un into the unknown so frightening to me? What, I'm going to feel out of control? Okay, so we're going to be out of control. We can't control everything. We can't control everything, including death. But, you know, I'm not talking about the literal death. We have to have little deaths along the way. That's what, that's what the dark night of the soul is even about. It's like experiencing the death of the ego. It's experiencing the death of the small self the small little girl and little boy and all of us that just wants to hold ourselves back because we're too scared. Do you know, we want mommy and daddy to take care of us and to make it okay for us. You know, we have to rise and be those people that are in power that can make powerful decisions for ourselves. So those questions, Dr. Pat, I'm big on asking yourself questions daily. Yeah. And, you know, it's really fascinating. I work, I do work with women in addiction and recovery. And, you know, you get to be on the pulse of what's really in their hearts and minds, what makes them, what makes their skin crawl every day. And you would think, well, maybe it's the politics. No, it's not really. It's like, how do I get up every day? How do I put one foot in front of the other? How do I not use? How do I not drink? What are my tools? What are my practices? And what am I going to do spiritually today? And it's the backbone. Of it. Um, but one of the things you talk about in the book, which I think is so important, and I need to touch upon it because it really leads, you know, to where we're going. And that is the spiritual initiation is not being afraid to communion with the invisible. Mm. Now, mm. I have gone to therapy, kicked out of Catholic boarding school for claiming that Jesus talked to me. And I'm six years old. But how do we help people understand? Nowhere does it say we are not capable, able, or allowed to do this. Hello. Oh, you're touching on so many powerful things today. And thank you for that. Um, you know, that's really what I'm proposing in the book to take people on this journey and things like to sit quietly you know, even in contemplation and ask, do you know, ask ourselves, you know, how do I, how do I listen? You talked about earlier about listen. How do I receive guidance? How do I allow that which maybe I cannot see? And I don't really know what it is. You know, we define, I say this in the book, we define, you know, we all grew up hearing descriptions of God. You know, we just imagine this archetypal description of God was some old man with a long beard and a robe, you know, in, bib in a biblical context term of what God looks like. We don't know what God looks. God is everything. God is in everything and in everyone. Do you know what I mean? So I do. But I think God even says that. <laughs> I, I hope so. Well, Somewhere I think God says that, right? I, I, yes. Yes. And whether you're declaring yourself the son of God or <laughs> the daughter of God or whatever, 
You know, again, listen, this is for us to define. This is your journey. This is your divine journey. Make it whatever you want it to be. You know, don't be afraid. Don't hold yourself back. Make this what you want it to be, people, because this is it. I mean, whether you believe in coming back or reincarnation, that's fine. But while we're here right now, what do you want to make this journey about? What is it for you? And you have a right to decide what you want that to be. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a time now where you take us to the next level. And that is enabling us to activate our supernatural powers. And so that's how I knew when I was reading the book. And I went back to the book again. I'm like, okay, so she she's like me. She like grew up with some like, she was like, had to be watching something like I was watching, right? Um, <laughs> and how do we know that this is tapping into a consciousness? You cannot put a movie out there. There's only one movie I think that I've heard released recently that didn't make it to the blockbuster. There's only one Marvel movie that I've heard didn't make it to the blockbuster. We could do a whole nother show and I could tell you why it didn't. But look at where we are. You know, look at what we're plugging into. You and I were chatting about the Matrix, but that's only the beginning. You know, we now have a pop culture that is stepping up the bar in levels of imagination and creativity. But are you fascinated by the fact that so many of them are about supernatural powers? Supernatural powers, right? I mean, comic books, how many decades back do we want to go with that? Yeah, and that's for anybody that was a sci-fi lover, which we all, you, know, you and I clearly are, or anything that we watch that took us into the more extraordinary realms of, you know, human existence that go beyond just, you know, again, these levels of consciousness that keep us in a more sort of mundane way of looking at life. We, we went there because we knew that there was something more. We just sense that there's something more to this existence, to the cosmos, to the universe. We, you know, for those that really feel sensitive to that or can intuit that, you know, it's like that Peggy Lee song is, is, is that all there is? All right. Is this all there is? I don't think so. You know, but if you want to think that, go for it. You know what I mean? If you think it's just what you're seeing, it is. And that's, what holds meaning for you i respect that do you know but i do think why we see we go to those movies we watch these marvel comedy movies comic books go to the screen and each one of them just gets more phantasmagorical than the next one is because we want to be taken there and we want it for that 90 minutes or however long they are we want to really be at one with those supernatural characters we want to believe that we have those supernatural abilities. No, we can't fly, you know, like, like they do. We can't do, but we can do a lot, you know, that might be considered supernatural or superpowers, you know, and we, we don't, we only know is, is that we use a very small percentage of our powers and a very small percentage of the brain's power, do you know, which is fascinating to me. And, you know, it's really interesting about the brain power. Um, I was reading an article where they said that that's a myth. And I said, you know, not really. Okay. I know we use 100% of our brain, but that's not the real question. Do we use it to the capacity that it is available to us? And we know the answer is no, because we find stories. We find people that literally can leap tall buildings to save a child or lift a car, right? I mean, this is not made up stuff. But what I love about this is that when we look at the way of the light worker, and when we take a look at what I wanted to talk with you about in the last minutes left, first of all, I cannot believe that you reference Evelyn Underhill. Oh, I'm her book. Oh my gosh, I pulled it out the uh, the other day to read it and I'm reading this and it's like, oh wait a minute. Oh my god. Did I mean, he actually Evelyn, mentioned that? Evelyn Underhill was oh, the a, mysticism a, book. Or, oh, I mean, she was and it was divine providence the way I found the working of Evelyn. You know how that works. Talk about the synchronicity. I was like, you know, mysticism, I'm going into these areas <laughs> into discover Evelyn Underhill and I'm like, okay, wow. 
you know, that is the world of which I'm speaking of. You yeah. know? And even what I cite in the book about her particular mystical experience, just walking down some, you know, funky street, you know, where she suddenly had this mystical experience. And that's why I say you can have a mystical experience doing anything and everything. Yeah. You don't have to be sitting under the Bodhi tree like the Buddha. Do you know what I mean? You know, I mean, yes, maybe he had the aha you know, moment of infinity at that time, because he was a seeker, or so the story goes that he was, that he had that great enlightenment that happened. But we're on the trajectory of having these mystical experiences that we can have just about at any time, or at any place, if we're available to experience them. Yeah. Look, I can't say enough about how uh, enlightening is not the right word, how activating this latest project, this book of yours is. And I have to say activating because it, yes, it's a book that talks about so many things, but the way you've done the book is you, in, in every section of the book, you have either something to think about or something to do. Thank you for that. Um, and then you ask questions or you'll you'll give us things like say silently. And again, this is another amazing body of work from you. I want to ask you this last thing. First of all, please tell us again how we get a copy of the book, how we find out about you. And then I would love to know your personal personal message, your vision. What is what is Aura's vision? <laughs> well, first of all, Thank you in advance, Dr. Pat, for having me on your fantastic show and really holding space for this conversation. You know, it's been very illuminating to be able to go into these areas with you. So thank you for that. Um, People can go to oranadrich.com, order my book on Amazon, you know, for that immediate delivery that they do because they're taking over the world. (laughs) Um, so there's that. And as far as my vision, really my vision or my desire, I should say that comes from the deep recesses of my heart and soul is really just to have us all awaken. Just, just to, just to wake up, Mm -hmm. wake up from the dream, do you know, and really see that this is and can continue to be heaven on earth. But it's Mm -hmm. our job to make it that. Mm. Thank you so much for everything. Um, Thank you for, first of all, um, writing something that comes from your heart that touches upon the days, the times, the world that we all live in. Whether I'm talking about somebody struggling in three jobs to pay the rent, you know, in another part of the country or another part of the world, or somebody that's sitting at the top of a a company not even thinking about the fact that they are millionaires and still don't have enough money. And what I mean by this is, this is what we need for the times we're in now and the times we're about to go into now. And so thank you so much for all of that. Thank you for everything you do. And then also on your website, people can connect with you. They can do things with you, right? And there, you said there's an audio version of the book, right? Audio version coming out very soon, which I will, I'll make that announcement on my website. And like, okay. I'm happy to have people reach out to me. Um, there's a way to do that. There's an email on the um, mm-hmm on the website. So please, you know, reach out, tell me what's going on on your journey. Good. Great. Connect. Yeah. And when the audio version comes out, let us know so we can tell everybody. Thank you. I'm all super right. Well, thank you so much. You oh, bet. Love um, again, everyone. And by the way, we didn't get to everything in here, but there's so much. Um, it is really one of those books that you can pick up and you can sit down and you can think to yourself, What does this message mean? I want to leave everybody with this from the book in the part of the book called The Way of the Light Worker. And I want to leave you all with this from Aura. I am a light worker. My light guides me and shines a light on others. May we light up the world with the light in our hearts and awaken together in divine wisdom. Thank you, Aura. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Jacob.
Thank you all for tuning us in. You're the best audience on the planet. We'll see you next time. All clear.